perception of Brazilian retail in 2018 stepping a little bit into the lion's den, given that that's what you guys do every day. Um, we're expecting 9.2% retail sales growth this year, uh, nominal 5.2% real. And the model that the guys run says that that's the sort of growth rate you should expect from a consumer spending growth rate in GDP terms of just below 4%, which as you will recall from the beginning of the slide, uh, beginning of the package is, is what we're anticipating. Um, their argument is we expect furniture, home appliances, electronics uh, within the consumer discretionary sector to outperform. The argument there is, is, is fairly mechanical. Those tend to be the sectors that are higher beta to an improving um, consumer story, or if you like, they are, um, uh, they are uh, some of the sectors which react the most to an improving consumer spending story. And then if you look ahead to longer term opportunities and drivers, Groceries because of the still low modern format oh, penetration of apparel, drugstores, etc. And um, the guys have given me a very nice um, quick uh, seminar on um, where the the new labor law is coming in to benefit um, Brazilian retail in terms of um, improving the conditions under which people can hire short term labor, temporary labor, etc. Um, and, to, and to manipulate to work on the hours that people are working. Um, the, the new labor law clearly is a major positive. Now, as I rattled through showed you earlier, so sometime around the, the second quarter of last year, you started to see this, uh, this measure of household consumption going um, in positive. Um, what we've got here is um, we've got quarter quarter seasonally adjusted data. We've also got um, We've also got year and year, but because perhaps primarily because inflation is coming down, and um, and these uh, critical ratios, debt to um, household debt ratios and, and debt servicing to income ratios are, uh, which are high, frankly, by global emerging market standards, but they are starting to peak and starting to come down. And frankly, we believe that the bottom one is the more important one, which is the debt service to income ratio. Which that's, you know, that's all those particular charts I wanted to show you. I'm going to finish well, off with my course, remaining course, three course, minutes that I've got available to me like just to show bigger. some of the metrics that we're looking at in terms of the Brazilian retail sector. So if you look here, you'll see that the black line is Brazil, MSCI Brazil again since the beginning of last year, which is when, um, which is when the market started to, to recover. You'll see the food retailers have done particularly well since then, up well over 100%. The non-food retailers are a little bit um, less well over that over that whole period. And um, and then we're just going to show you that um, what's happening in terms of the Brazilian retail sector is it's considered to be a defensive sector. It's considered to be what we call in our business a growth sector, not a value sector. It tends to trade at a higher multiple. And, and what you've seen unusually in 2017, um, and it's been a key part of my overall emerging market strategy, this is not just Brazil by any means, we've shown people that in a world where the dollar goes down, which is what happened last year, and markets go up, which is what happened last year, tip out of the growth stocks. That wasn't the case last year. People were into growth, and of course it was primarily, to be fair, technology um, in Asia. But the effect of that is to push up some of these multiples, which are looking um, quite rich in Brazil, both compared to other emerging market retailers, but also in particular to Brazil overall. There's the earnings growth numbers, which are, to be fair, a little higher. Price to book is also higher. ROEs are a little bit lower. So there's no doubt once again here that we are looking at a, a sector that is relatively, relatively fully priced. Investors like it, they park money there. It's a little bit more defensive than some of the higher beta, more volatile sectors in the Brazilian market. Now, if I can just sum up, very Brazilian story is something that investors globally really like a lot. They like it because of the quality of the companies. They like it because there's been a tremendous improvement over time in corporate governance. It is not in a world of um, where there's a lot of corruption, sadly, still across the emerging markets. It's not by any means one of the worst situations, far from it, in terms of um, conventional 
corruption, state capture, as people talk about it, um, you know, which is impacting, for example, South Africa so badly at the moment. It's resource rich, it's um, population rich, of course it's got a young population as well. Um, that would make it unquestionably a very stable long-term story for investors to believe in and to want to be involved in. And the only thing that's stopping it being more stable and less volatile is unfortunately to is the is the smaller size of capex in the economy and the overwhelming importance size of the government sector biggest goal for the government has to be therefore to um the biggest goal of the policy makers has to be reduce the size of the government sector and as a result of that bring um the savings ratio up bring the investment ratio up that will create more stability and that would allow brazil to really fulfill its tremendous long-term um, potential. Thank you so much for listening so well. Thank you. Mm -hmm.